are magical beings welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new here i am the woodland witch and today's video is very special it is a collaboration with my lovely friend heather the wild woodland witch i'll introduce heather a little bit more later but when you're done watching this video be sure to check out her video as well so i use flowers in my craft in a lot of different ways both magically and medicinally and just like any correspondence, flowers all hold their own symbolism and magical properties. I get a lot of my symbolism for different flowers from floriography, which is also known as the Victorian language of flowers. Floriography was very popular in the Victorian era, and it was a way for them to send messages a little bit more discreetly. These were usually messages that proper etiquette deemed a little bit too inappropriate to be expressed openly which is what led them to create this special language. Each flower was given specific symbolism based on folklore, mythology, physical characteristics, even where the location was that this flower could be found. For instance, the red poppy symbolizes remembrance and eternal sleep, and this is largely due to its location. On the battlefield, red poppy was a common flower that would bloom despite all of the wreckage that was surrounding it. It became a really powerful symbol of remembrance of the death of the soldiers and honoring their lives as well. Marigold is a flower that receives its symbolism from its physical characteristics. When the sun goes down, the marigold flower curls into itself and the blooms of the flower begin to droop down. When the morning dew would settle on these drooping blooms, the flower appeared to be crying. And this is what gives the marigold its symbol of grief and also remembrance. If you're interested in learning any more about floriography, I do recommend this book by Jessica Rue. It is an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers. It is all Jessica's original artwork. It contains the symbolism of the flowers, the origin of this symbolism, as well as other flowers you might want to pair together with it for a specific intention. Similar to those in the Victorian era, I also craft bouquets in my home weekly. I spoke about it a little bit in my last video when I talked about protections that I do seasonally, but I really like to use these bouquets for any intention that I'm trying to bring forth into the home. This week I used sunflower Flowers. They symbolize joy and happiness and light. They are also a correspondence of Lunasa. Sunflowers always remind me of that first harvest Sabbath and that autumn is quickly approaching and summer is coming to an end. I also chose wood lilies. They are a correspondence of protection. They are known for warding against unfriendly and unwarranted spells. I always tried to incorporate at least one protective flower into my arrangement. Roses are also great. They have thorns, really good for defense. The last flower I chose to work with this week is China Aster. China Aster symbolizes love and trust. China Aster is also very deep in purple, which I associate with psychic ability and intuition. So combining that deep purple with the correspondence of trust in the China Aster, this week I'm calling forth trust in my intuition, and I am hoping to strengthen that trust even further. Bouquets are such a lovely mundane magical act. It's one of my favorite ways to set intentions into the home, and there's something about having fresh flora in the house that I just love. As I said before, I usually switch bouquets weekly, and because we never miss an opportunity to collect witchy tools, when I switch out these bouquets, I will hang dry the old bouquet, I will utilize their petals, thorns, and save all of those lovely ingredients for spell work use later on. So before we get into more flower magic goodness, let me introduce you to my lovely friend, Heather Lynn, the Wild Woodland Witch. Heather has been such an inspiration to me in my craft. I have had the pleasure of getting to know her over these last few months, and we really connected. Our crafts are so similar, but so different in so many ways. Heather is a forest witch. She is whimsical, intuitive, and so in touch with nature. The care that she has for the earth is absolutely beautiful, and the way that she works with its energy is so unique and inspiring. She sees nature through an animistic lens and truly cares and connects with each and every plant, tree, and flower that she comes in contact with. She has challenged me in the best ways, and I am so honored to call her a friend. So be sure to join The Wild Witchery and check out The Wild Woodland Witch on YouTube and Instagram. So because I am an herbalist and a witch, I like to use flowers for their medicinal properties as well. And to me, medicine is magic. Some of my favorite flowers to work with magically and medicinally are goldenrod, yarrow, and St. John's wort. I harvest goldenrod in late summer, early fall. It's also a much welcome sign that autumn is on the way. Spooky season is almost here. Goldenrod is associated with happiness, good luck, good fortune, and also divination. Because the stem of the goldenrod is so stiff, it was historically used as a divining rod, also known as dousing rods. 
They would be used to help recover lost items and was thought to help lead to buried treasure. It is also believed that if goldenrod sprouts next to your home, the occupants of that home will find good fortune and good luck. There's two ways I like to use goldenrod medicinally. I will harvest it and dry it out for the winter months. It is one of the best decongestants. Sinus issues, dry, scratchy throat, congestion, amazing for that. To aid with these ailments, I usually consume it in a tea or a decoction. I also really like to use it as a tincture. A tincture is a alcohol-based extraction. Because this is alcohol-based, there's really no need to dry out your flowers. Just fill your jar up and top it with your alcohol, 80 proof or above, and allow it to sit for about eight weeks. A goldenrod tincture is really good as a diuretic to help cleanse the urinary system. It can also help with inflammation, swelling, and muscle spasms. There are many, many uses for goldenrod, but these are just some of my favorites. Our next flower that I love working with is yarrow. Yarrow grows very easily. Just put it in a sunny spot and it's good to go. Yarrow symbolizes healing. And I also like to associate this plant with longevity and persistence. From seed, it takes yarrow about two years to fully solidify and become stabilized. So I really like to use this plant magically for anything involving longevity, strength, persistence, it's just a lovely little reminder that all the hard work you put in from this little seed and all these little endeavors, it's just inspiring to think of this little plant as a seed and think of all these endeavors and projects that we start from such a small space. Watching them grow and feeding them and nurturing them. This is another flower that gets its symbolism from the battlefield. Yarrow is a very powerful healing herb. On the battlefield, yarrow was used in styptic powders. It has astringent properties, meaning that it can help bind and close wounds. It was used in poultices to help with bruises and swelling. I also really like to use yarrow in glamour magic. I have very sensitive skin, especially on my face. When I notice that my skin is going through it a little bit, I will try to stay away from washing it or using anything really harsh. And yarrow is a wonderful substitute. It helps cleanse the face and tighten the pores. This is where I also utilize it for glamour magic to bring forth any healing regarding my self image and my confidence. I just love yarrow. It's so versatile. It's beautiful. It comes in so many different colors. And you can ask any herbalist what their top five favorite herbs are, and I guarantee you yarrow will be in that top five. Our next flower is my most used magically, and that is St. John's wort. St. John's wort has long been associated with protection. Traditionally, St. John's wort was gathered around midsummer. It would be hung above doorways and picture frames to offer protection to the home or the occupants of the photo. It was thought to protect travelers from getting lost in the woods and also offer them protection from the fae and the devil. Medicinally, St. John's wort has been studied to help treat anxiety and depression. In a salve, St. John's wort is really great for nerve pain. I had a lot of nerve damage from my C-section. I will usually utilize this flower in a salve. Because of the nerve damage near that incision, I do have a lot of spasms and placing a salve of St. John's wort near that area has been so helpful. Just like yarrow, it is another wound healer. You can see the blooms of the flower are turning a little red. This is from the hypericin in the blooms. Hypericin is where you're going to get most of your medicinal properties of this plant. As I said, this plant can be utilized as a salve, but it also makes a good tincture as well. Because of its protective properties, it is something that I really like to use in home protection magic any sort of warding and deflecting negative energy. So I also like to carry on the tradition of hanging it above the door frame to call forth protection and safety into the home. All right, everyone, that is our video on flower magic. A big thank you to Heather for collaborating with me on this video. Be sure to check out her video regarding flower magic. I will have that linked in the description below. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.